Bruce, here's an interesting topic that uh, that comes up occasionally, uh, and that is lost items. And it is something that can be an area of grief and disturbance, and it's no fun when it happens. But believe it or not, it generally is not a huge problem. I would agree totally. You know, we, uh, we've we chatted about this on many occasions, and the, the first instinct, the natural instinct of somebody is to assume that I can't find it, it's not where I left it, it's stolen. Yes. And what are you going to do about it? And there's an instant combative atmosphere there that's never successful. So my job, our job, everybody's job is to try to prevent that from, from escalating to that. So, so let's talk about the, the various things that can cause an item to be lost, not in its place and not sold. The first one is probably just, just a, uh, some type of, of honest misplacement or mistake. How, sure. does, how, does that, how does that fit into, because there's only two or three instances for lost items. So the first one is, has, has kind of a wide uh, array of items that attached to it. So it could be it could be just misplaced, set down in the wrong place. Somebody just picked it up and didn't know where to put it back. Yeah, or didn't want to. I mean, that's you know that in in, in lies in many times I see people and I, I tell this story frequently. I had a lady who's obviously got means, who came in one day and she says, you know, Bruce, she says, I, I hid these items in here the other day because I wanted to get them and now I can't find them. And I was like, oh. Please don't do that sure, sure. <laughs> simply because, you know, she didn't feel like she was doing anything dishonest or di disrespectful, or they may just have found something else. They're going to set it down and they're going to pick up the other item. And that's where you can find it. If it sometimes they're the same kind of an item and sometimes they're not, they just decided, oh, I don't got the money for it. Or the, 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 the child, my child was, was begging for it. And now they're not, their attention's on something else. So I'm going to set this down here. It can be harmless. Right. The uh, another possibility is that the item came out to be purchased, and the and the person changed their mind, and it became a go back. And and then you know we've even had dealers go, I saw it up at the front counter, and then we did a go back, and it went back to their booth properly, and then it, for some other reason became a lost item after that. So just because you know we have a, a, a quick involvement with it on a go back doesn't mean that it can't carry on its lost item after that. So when dealers see it up at the front counter and then it doesn't sell, there there is a host of, of, of what can happen sure. at that point. Perhaps they have multiple spaces. It could be in any one of their spaces. Perhaps they didn't, you know, uh, typically it, it was in a lock showcase. It's an expensive item. We always tell our team members that if it's small enough to fit in your hand and it's over 25 bucks, it probably needs to be in their lock case if they have one. However, I've the backs of our tags, you know, maybe you wrote your booth number on it. Okay. Um, maybe it went to one of the other booth spaces, or maybe just maybe it got set down in a different place, which is more obvious, and then somebody else picked it up right away and set it down somewhere else. It, any of that can transpire because right. it's not right where you left it. Uh, you know, we always tell our dealers, take pictures of your booths. Everybody's got a smartphone these days. You redo your booth every time you're in. You've got a date. You've got a time. You can show us what it looked like. You can show us where it was. That helps immensely. So, yeah, it's to a be powerful. Able to find these yep. Now we should we should clarify that if you have a locked case with us, and you're missing something out of there that's not in your sales report, we're going to jump on that right away. That's very important to us. Uh, the the items in the booth, I got to tell you that lost items just happen. They can float around our mall for weeks, months. Uh, we've years. we've had them. Yeah, we've had them over a years. year. Uh, we've had people that I've had, had them for several years that it was a little exited, table that a little table from us and we have to go and find that person after they left and try to return their merchandise to them so there's it, it it certainly does happen i've had a dealer come up and report something missing uh and and then months later they'll come back and they go you remember that thing that and i'm like yeah i remember that and they're like it was it was just on my sales report. It sold. They go, I have no idea where it was, but it just sold. Um, yeah. So another honest uh, event that happens in this 
is that the item is already sold and on your report. So if it's really close to the end of a pay period, just past the end of a pay period, you may not have your your uh, your pay period report printed and given to you yet. And so it, it just may already be on your report. True, true. And, and not every dealer thinks to ask what's in their file first. I've even sure. had to be on a previous check that they didn't pick up and the check's still in their file and on accident, they didn't ask for it. And we've gone through a whole nother pay period. Uh, I think we had chatted once before and you said sometimes it, the item sold a month ago and they just now noticed it is missing. And so they go back and look at their history and find out, oh, yeah, well, there it is. Or their description's different than they remember. And so, you know, that's why we have double and triple check systems we try to use a SKU, that we like to cross-reference yeah. uh, with the SKU number, with the description, with the, uh, I have some dealers who use the exact same SKU number for every single item in their booth. Hazel's one of them. And so anything with the SKU number Hazel should probably be posted to that dealer. Yes. And we found items because just that, we type in the SKU number Hazel and we say, whoa, whoa, this is on a different dealer's number. So we immediately know we need to check on that or find out why that happened. Right, and that, and that, that event can happen for, for a couple different reasons. First is, we made a mistake. We honestly just typed in a, a wrong number. Uh, the flip side to that is it could be that the, the dealer wrote the wrong number or the dealer did not write it legibly and we just missed in transposing it onto the onto the point of sale. Those things happen. We're all human and, and, and we, you know, we're going to have some minor efficiencies just as dealers do also. Uh, we'll go back and, and pull the tag for that day and try to find the tag uh, that sold and, and see see what went wrong with it. And and frankly, you know, if we made a mistake, we'll make it right. True, true. I mean, if it's something that we can check and we can prove that it was our error, um, you know, misconception, we do everything within our power to try to do the stand up thing. Uh, talk to the dealer, you know, I've had dealers before who've uh, had a piece missing and it was a piece that somebody had called them on for an offer, but they were thinking differently than the team member was perhaps explaining. And so this item sold under a different description and they come in, now it's gone. Right. Uh, you know, of course they're, they're angry about that, but they need to have a little skin in the game too, because you're an adult and it's your ability that you have to communicate with the individual who gives you a call. Um, you know, you're sure what kind of piece it is in this day and age. Can you text me a photo? I'm just, I'm not sure what that is. Yes. Um, or can you, can you hold it on the back counter, get this person's name and number? I'm going to have to come see it. I don't even know if it's mine. And that happens because tags can get misplaced. Uh, somebody who may start out with maybe not even the best of intentions loses a tag or takes a tag off of something or whatever. And then next thing you know, it's in a booth with no tag on it, or perhaps the dealer forgot to put the tag on it. And then it could get trafficked around to another booth. And then it comes to the front counter and somebody's like, well, you know, that was, that's $17. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's mine. Well, they've never seen the piece. And then we find out later that it comes up as a lost item. And it's all because there was miscommunication on several different levels. Sure, sure. And you mentioned a, uh, an event earlier where, where a shopper may hide an item and hoping to, <laughs> to pick it up later when, it, when it's on, you know, when we have a 15% off sale. And, and we call that the hideaway program. That's right. It's a, it's, a great, it's a great way. But then they forget to come back. And that item, uh, we talked about before in items uh, in one of our stores that was hidden in the bottom of the dresser and just forgotten about for over a year. We knew that the item was missing. We just didn't know where it was at. And almost a year later, that dresser came up to be sold. And of course, we look in the furniture drawers as stuff is leaving the store. There is that item that was missing. And that dealer that had, had came up and said, I'm sure it's been stolen. These, these are just stolen. And believe it or not, there it was. it was. It was sitting there all the time. I think it's important to not always go to thinking the worst about other individuals because there are a multitude of errors that can transpire uh, on lost items. You can be a very effective part of preventing them. We talked about the photographs. We talked about how you uh, uh, place the tags on the items. Mm -hmm. we, uh, I want to talk about how you need to make sure your description is succinct. We, we had an instance here where there was a milk can seat that was green and yellow 
it was John Deere colors. And then we had a milk can seat that was Harley Davidson. One of the two dealers put milk can seat Harley Davidson. The other dealer put milk can seat. And when that particular instance transpired, whether uh, it's highly unlikely they misplaced their tags, but it gave the perfect window of opportunity for it, for a dishonest individual to take advantage of. Sure. It. Yep. Exactly. So, so there is, there is no. I mean, we, you look at our our malls. There's upwards of a million individual items in our malls, all with handwritten price tags. There are going to be things that happen, and and some of those are 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 minor mistakes some of those are intentional by shoppers um, sure. our our intent is is for dealers to understand that we think we have far less than half the problem of shoplifting that a big box store has we just get a better class of shopper uh, we do and and so it's, with it's that it's minimal when it does happen that there's dishonest people who who yes. come through here and just just don't make it easy for them and that's all the more reason why when you're in the store you should wear your name badge you should talk to people yep. you should be pleasant and courteous to everyone around you because dishonest people do not want to get noticed yep. and when yep. you talk to people and you say hey how are you doing what a cute baby or uh, you know i love your puppy or whatever if if that's pertinent to that individual uh, you know, if it's a lady talking to a lady, you might say, well, I love your blouse. Where'd you buy that from? Or, you know, if you have that power mm -hmm. to prevent many of these lost items from happening just simply by being kind. Yep. Yep. It's a, it's a great thing. So the first thing that dealers should do when they have something missing out of their booth, I always recommend look around your, your, in your adjacent booths. It's probably two or three booths away from you. Just, just sit down in the wrong place. Uh, when you come into your booth and you find something that's not yours, work to return it. If it, look on the back of the tag, if it, it's probably a booth next to you that it goes to. If you don't see where to return it, bring it up to the front counter. We'll take care of it. We know we know where it goes from there. Uh, so there are things that that dealers can do to help out the entire process. Uh, not that they're they're in charge of searching for lost items, but just the, the minor things that they can do that uh, that become very helpful. Well, I challenge you uh, as a dealer in any of your malls, any of our malls, that you walk through the mall one way and then you turn around and you walk through the mall the complete opposite way. You're going to see two different malls. Yes. That's why I have found lost pieces in that dealer's booth. It's just on the other side of their booth. Yep. So so the things that we do to, to find lost items as uh, that our staff will do, immediately they'll, they'll search through the point of sale. They'll look for different variations of, of the uh, description, variations of the SKU, other things like that, that that we may find in there. Secondly, um, we'll walk them all. We'll look in the space, look around it, and, and find uh, find if there, there's anywhere close to there. Uh, we also look through some of our lost tags. Maybe there's the price tag has been turned in. We'll go back to lost and found. We have a, a, a case where we where we put stuff that we don't know what to do with, uh, that it doesn't have a tag on it. So maybe it's in the lost and found area. Uh, occasionally we'll look on the, uh, on the, on the cameras and uh, taking pictures of items that are leaving the store that dealers have taken out. There's, there's a host of things that we can do um, that uh, help us try to locate them. It's not that we just take, take your information and do nothing with it. We certainly do actively try to find it. Agreed. We do the exact same setup here with all the different avenues to approach. Uh, how can we best find this? Cross-referencing, uh, looking at different spellings of words, because unfortunately, if it's a key word like Harley, then maybe somebody yeah. spelled it wrong. Yep. And if you try just a different spelling, I mean, that's one of the reasons why eBay can be a great buying tool because sometimes things get listed on there under an improper spelling. And I've talked to dealers who've gotten really wonderful deals yeah. because they're willing to diversify and put in a different, maybe a different way of spelling sure. something. All right. That's been a great topic. And it's, and it's one that, that comes up that contains a lot of emotion, but generally 
doesn't need you know doesn't need to be because because there's usually a good outcome to it. I won't say it's every time. I, no, there are some dishonest people in this world. Yeah. The the story about the milk can seat. The person purposely was trying to do something dishonest. Sure. Uh, we know this for a variety of reasons. They come in all shapes and sizes. They come in all age groups. I've had them in the age group of 70 to 80 years old who've taken things and we've been able to track it backwards. I've had young people. It's not always young people. I've had middle-aged people. It's usually somebody you know, in their 50s, 60s, 70s is more prominent than you might believe. It's sure. not just a young person issue. Um, there's a myriad of reasons why sometimes people just feel entitled. Yep. They feel like they should, you know, the story I've told many, many times is a lady drug one croquet set over to another booth and I happened to walk up behind her while she was mixing and matching and putting it onto one croquet set. And I, she happened to be 80. And I asked her, I said, ma'am, what are you doing? And she says, well, I want that croquet set. I want to pay that price, but I want those balls and I want those wickets. You can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> You're taking something from somebody else, you know, and it, she didn't, she didn't think she was doing a thing wrong. Right. Right. Exactly right. So we, we deal with a, a, a wide variation of, of events here. Very true. Very true. There are a few dishonest people, but it's far fewer than you might yep. think. We it call is. it the 2% rule. Yep. All right, Bruce. Great topic. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it so much. Have an awesome day.